Hello everyone, Victor is here and in this video we are going to talk about functional groups in organic chemistry. So we define functional group as a specific combination of atoms that has a unique set of chemical properties. And before we jump into the functional groups themselves, I have a couple of honorable mentions. The first thing, the first honorable mention here is going to be alkenes. Alkenes, while technically is not a functional group, is going to be a backbone of our molecules. So alkene is anything where where you have simple carbon-carbon uh, bonds and carbon-hydrogen bonds. No double bonds, no heteroatoms or anything like that. We will normally show our alkenes as a zigzag when we are drawing the bond line structure, so there is nothing to identify here. However, one other thing that I want to mention here that whenever in organic chemistry we are saying that something is R, like the rest of the molecule. Typically, we mean a simple alkyl chain, which is going to be a simple alkane without any specific functional groups or any additional chemistry that can be relevant to us. So this way, when I'm, let's say, talking about alkyl halides, I can say that alkyl halide is anything with the structure Rx, where X is going to be either fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. And by R here, I mean just some sort of alkyl chain that is not relevant for me. So, for instance, I can draw, let's say, something like here, where I have a chlorine atom, which is my halogen, connected to a long alkyl chain, and the nature of that alkyl chain is irrelevant to me. That is just some sort of R. Now, the first actual functional group that we are going to talk about is going to be an alkene. Alkene is a carbon-carbon double bond. And whenever we are looking for alkene in a molecule, we're always going to be looking specifically for a double bond that is not attached to any other functional groups. So, for instance, I can, let's say, draw something like that, and I have my double bond, which is going to be right over here, connected to the rest of the molecule, which is irrelevant. The next one is going to be alkyne, that is another simple functional group, another backbone type of a functional group, where we have a triple bond between carbons. So alkynes, that is a type of a functional group that you are going to see from time to time in organic chemistry, but it's not the most common functional group, although, as I said, it's going to pop up from time to time. When we are drawing alkynes, the important thing to remember is that carbons in the alkynes, they are sp hybridized species, and because of that, they exhibit linear geometry with a bond angle of 180 degrees. So whenever you are drawing your alkynes in a bond line structures, always make sure that you are preserving that linear structure instead of bending it like we would normally zigzag our molecules. While drawing something of this sort is not necessarily a mistake, that is just it doesn't look good. Don't do that. While your instructor will probably not punish you for that and take points from you, um, he or she will definitely get annoyed by that. Finally, one other simple functional group, one other simple hydrocarbon that we are going to see is arenes. Arenes, or aromatic compounds, until you hit the aromatic chemistry in your course, that is, going to be just a simple six-membered ring with alternating double bonds like that. Occasionally, you might see a different structure for an arene where we have a single bond with a donut inside like that. Uh, sometimes those are called fried eggs because it kind of looks like you're frying an egg on a skillet or something like that. Um, many instructors prefer if you draw the left structure for arenes. However, it's a good idea to remember that aromatic compounds can be depicted with a donut inside, with a circle inside, and while technically it is more correct from the resonance standpoint, this is not the most... Uh, popular type of representation, so you may or may not see that in your class, and your instructor may or may not frown upon you using the structure on the right. So, check with what they are doing there in class before you start uh, drawing that with circles like that. Alright, moving on, we have oxygen-containing groups, and probably the most iconic and the most common out of all of those is going to be an alcohol. Alcohol is a compound where you have ROH, and the OH had to be specifically connected to an sp3 hybridized carbon, so something of this sort, where the carbon is not containing a double bond, not containing any other function group or anything else. So, for instance, I can draw a simple 
alcohol molecule like that, a butanol, where this atom is sp3 hybridized and overall this part of the molecule, the left side of the molecule, is the R group which we don't really care about. Ethers, on the other hand, is a type of a molecule where you have two R groups connected to the oxygen. So you are no longer having an OH group, but you have an oxygen connected to two carbon-containing groups. Again, in this case, R is something that is not relevant, something that doesn't have any other uh, functional groups. So, for instance, diethyl ether, which is a common solvent in organic chemistry. Finally, when it comes to an epoxide, well, epoxide is a special type of an ether. Epoxide is a three-membered ring with an oxygen like that. And while other cyclic uh, ethers don't really have anything special about them, epoxides, due to the huge amount of strain in the ring, they actually exhibit certain type of uh, reactivity that other cyclic uh, ethers do not have. And if we go back to our definition of a functional group, where it is a specific combination of atoms with unique set of chemical properties, since epoxides have unique set of chemical properties that other cyclic ethers do not have, epoxide is its own functional group. So whenever you are looking for epoxide, always look for little three membered ring with an oxygen little party hat like that. Notice that the bigger ring, let's say I have a five membered ring like that, that is no longer an epoxide, it's got to be a three membered ring. However, we can have other rings and other structures in our molecule just as fine. So for instance, if I have a molecule like that, then I have two functional groups. I have an epoxide over here and on top of that, I also have an alkene, just like that. All right, moving on, we have carbonyls. Carbonyls are also oxygen-containing groups, and they are uh, a huge family of functional groups. All carbonyls are going to have a CO double bond, which is referred to as a carbonyl. The first two are going to be an aldehyde and a ketone, and those two are very similarly looking functional groups, however, there is one huge difference between them. The aldehyde functional group will have CO double bond connected to a hydrogen on one or both ends, while ketone is going to have a carbonyl CO double bond that is connected to two carbon containing groups and does not have a hydrogen. You can kind of use a simple mnemonic that an aldehyde has a hydrogen, so you can remember it like that. And those two especially when it comes to the aldehyde, can be a little bit tricky to spot because there are multiple different ways how we can draw aldehyde functional group. Traditionally, a lot of people do like to show this hydrogen for an aldehyde, like for instance what I have here for the hexanol. However, the aldehyde functional group can be drawn without that implicit hydrogen, just like that. And in this case, you gotta remember that if my carbon contains three bonds, one, two, three, it means that I do have an implicit hydrogen over here, so that is still an aldehyde functional group. In the case of the carbonyls, we are just looking for a CO double bond that is not connected to anything else in terms of other functional groups. So I can have, let's say, a ketone like this one, where the carbonyl is a part of the six-membered ring, and we have our CO double bond connected to two other carbon containing groups, so those are my R groups and they are not particularly relevant. Alternatively, I can have, let's say, a uh, ketone that looks like that. In this case, I have the R group on the left side and I have an R group on the right side. In this case, those are two different R groups, but again, those on their own don't contain any other functional groups directly connected to the carbonyl, so that is just a ketone. You're also likely to encounter sulfur-containing functional groups. The two most common sulfur-containing functional groups are going to be the sulfide, where sulfur is connected to two R groups, so for instance, we can have diethyl sulfide like that, or I can maybe have a cyclic version where sulfur is a part of the ring. All of that is going to be a sulfide. And we have thiols. Thiols are kind of similar to alcohols, but instead of oxygen, we have sulfur there. And again, the R group has to be something where the first carbon is sp3 hybridized carbon, which means that if I have 
a sulfur connected to just a simple alkyl chain that's going to give me my thiol, like butane thiol that I have over here. Another group of uh, organic molecules that you are going to encounter will contain nitrogens. And nitrogen containing functional groups are mostly composed of one big family, which is amines. Amine is a type of a functional group where we have nitrogen connected to one or multiple carbon containing groups like that. So we can have several different types of amines. We can have an amine where your nitrogen is connected to just one alkyl group, and we're going to refer to that as a primary amine. We can have nitrogen connected to two alkyl groups, and in that case we're going to call that a secondary amine. And also, we can have nitrogen connected to three different groups. So let's say I have nitrogen connected to three alkyl groups like that, and that one is going to be a tertiary amine. The other one, the other nitrogen-containing group, is going to be a nitrile. While technically nitriles are classified as carboxylic acid derivatives, I still personally like to take them as a simple functional group rather than classify that with carboxylic acids, and nitriles is the functional group where you have a C and triple bond. And remember, in general chemistry, when you have a cyanide, CN minus, that is a standalone anion, cyanide. However, when your CN is a part of the organic molecule, like let's say this one, that is going to be a nitrile. Probably your instructor is not going to scold you too harshly for calling nitrile a cyanide at the beginning of your course. Technically, cyanides and nitriles are different species, so it is inappropriate to call nitriles as cyanides. So just keep that in mind, especially if your instructor really likes to test your nomenclature and uh, uh, functional groups and such. So now we can move to the realm of the complex functional groups. The reason why I put so much emphasis on complex functional groups versus simple functional groups is because a lot of students make a mistake of assuming that if I break the molecule into its simple simplest components, then those functional groups are going to be what I see. What I mean by that, let me illustrate. Carboxylic acid is a functional group where I have a CO double bond connected to an OH. If you are not paying close attention to how the atoms are interconnected here, you might think that, okay, I have a carbonyl over here, so that's probably an aldehyde or a ketone, and I have an OH, so that must be an alcohol. So many students would say that that is a ketone and an alcohol or something like that, but no. This is a complex functional group, this is a carboxylic acid, it is not a carbonyl plus an alcohol, it's not an aldehyde plus an alcohol or a ketone plus alcohol or anything of that sort. The important thing here to keep in mind that when it comes to complex functional groups, although they might look like they are just a combination of simple ones, the complex functional group always takes precedence over the simple ones. Likewise, if I look at the acid chloride, I am going to have a structure that looks like that. I have a carbonyl and a chlorine. So it's not a carbonyl and the alkyl halide, but that is an acid chloride. Acid anhydride is probably the most complex one out of all of them because it has quite a few atoms that you would need to pay attention to and where exactly those atoms are located. So anhydride looks like this. Aster will have a carbonyl, CO double bond, connected to another OR group, so it's going to be something of this sort. And amides is going to have a carbonyl, which is going to be connected to a nitrogen, which can be connected to uh, one R group, two R groups, or a couple of hydrogens. So I can have, like in the case of the amines, I can have a case of a primary amide, or a secondary amide, or even a tertiary amide. So now, when we've learned about the most common functional groups that you are likely to encounter in your course, let's look at a few examples. Pause this video now, copy these molecules onto your paper, work through those, rewind the video if you need it uh, to refresh some of those functional groups, and then once you're ready to check your answers, continue with the video. All right, are we ready? So for molecule number one, what I have here, first one is going to be an aldehyde, then I have an alkene, 
and I also have an aromatic compound over here, so I'm going to call it an arene. For molecule number two, I have a carboxylic acid, then I have an ester, and I also have an arene, an aromatic compound. Molecule number three, I have sulfide, then I have over here a ketone, I have an alkene, and I have an alkyl halide. And finally, for molecule number four, I have this, that is going to be an ether, then this one is going to be an ester, this one is going to be a ketone, then we have an alcohol. Now notice in this case it is a ketone and alcohol because they are not directly connected to each other. It's not a carboxylic acid, we have a carbon in between. And finally one other functional group that I have in compound number 4 is going to be an alkyne. Did you get all of them? Let me know in the comments below and tell me which functional group is your favorite and I will see you in the next video.